Hallelujah. This is my wife, Lady Sandra. From every nation or sector with you, those who fear God, those who work all night, he rose, he rose. Yes, he did. Yes, he did. Mm. 
song and I thought I should share it with you. That is Lady Sandra McCoy singing, He Arose. Praise God. Praise God. He arose. He's alive. He's alive and he saves and he saves. Thank you, Lord. Glory to your name, Lord. We praise you this morning. Welcome, everybody. Welcome, welcome, welcome to God in the midst of Get them radio broadcast, the Sunday school lesson edition. And I am your host and teacher, Pastor Mark McCoy of New Harvest E Church in Harvest, Alabama. Oh, we thank you for joining us this morning. This is the day that the Lord has made, and we will rejoice and be glad. And it is a day we've never seen before, and a day we'll never see again. And I believe, as always, it is a day to praise our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Glory, 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 glory. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Woo. Let us go to the Lord in prayer. Dear Lord, we thank you and we praise you for all of your blessings. You've been better to us than we've been to ourselves. We thank you, God, just because of who you are. You are the creator. You are the sustainer. You are our keeper. You are the one that showed us love when we were unlovable by giving us your only begotten son, Jesus the Christ who died on the cross for our sins and, and you who you raised from the dead. Lord, we thank you for Jesus and his saving power. And then, Lord, when you took him home to sit at your right hand and 
intercede on our behalf. You, you didn't leave us hopeless. You didn't leave us helpless. You, you sent back your Holy Spirit who fills us and seals us until the day of redemption. Lord, we thank you for your Holy Spirit. Now, Lord, we plead the blood, the blood of Jesus over this whole uh, 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 Sunday school lesson, God. We plead the blood over the technology of Facebook and YouTube and, and, and blog talk and conference call. Oh, Lord, we plead your blood. Then, Lord, we plead the blood over everyone who's connected with us this day and those who are going to come back and listen to this later. We just give you glory, God. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Let me say this right off the bat. Uh, I, uh, My sister, Pastor Helen, she, she, she told me, she said, ooh, we listen, we listen to the broadcast on, our, at, um, on YouTube and we look at it on our television. We all got smart TVs and, and because we got smart TVs, we can go to YouTube and subscribe to Anthony McCoy or Pastor Mark McCoy. Just look me up, subscribe, and then you can look at this broadcast in your leisure, sitting on your couch. Oh, hallelujah. So we welcome you to do that. We have so many, so many videos in, in on YouTube that, that you can subscribe to. But if you don't know how to do that, that's okay. You can always go on the internet Go and get to Blog Talk Radio, and we have a great list of archives that you can listen to over and over again. And for those that don't know anything about the computer, oh, hallelujah, it's okay. Just share them this number, 619-639-4733, and let them call in to our Blog Talk and listen. And I'll, I'll give more announcements about that later. Hey man, hey man, hey man. Our Sunday school lesson today comes from from uh, the Gospel of John, the twenty first chapter. The Gospel of John, the twenty first chapter, verses one through fourteen. And the title of today's lesson is "The Risen Lord." The Risen Lord appears. So I'm going to have it read by the uh, Gateway Bible. Uh, uh, software. This is the Message Bible edition. Please listen in. Chapter 21. After this, Jesus appeared again to the disciples, this time at the Tiberias Sea, the Sea of Galilee. This is how he did it. Simon Peter, Thomas, nicknamed Twin, Nathaniel from Cana in Galilee, the brothers Zebedee, and two other disciples were together. Simon Peter announced, I'm going fishing. The rest of them replied, we're going with you. They went out and got in the boat. They caught nothing that night. When the sun came up, Jesus was standing on the beach, but they didn't recognize him. Jesus spoke to them. Good morning. Did you catch anything for breakfast? They answered, no. No. He said, throw the nets off the right side of the boat and see what happens. The right side. The right they did side. what he said. All of a sudden, there were so many fish in it, they weren't strong enough to pull it in. Then the disciple Jesus loved That's said to Peter, it's the master. When Simon Peter realized that it was the master, he threw on some clothes, for he was stripped for work, and dove into the sea. The other disciples came in by boat, for they weren't far from land, a hundred yards or so, pulling along the net full of fish. When they got out of the boat, they saw a fire laid with fish and bread cooking on it. Jesus said, bring some of the fish you've caught. Simon Peter joined them and pulled the net to shore. 153 big fish. And even with all those fish, the net didn't rip. Jesus said, breakfast is ready. Not one of the disciples dared ask, who are you? They knew it was the master. Jesus then took the bread and gave it to them. He did the same with the fish. This was now the third time Jesus had shown himself alive to the disciples since being raised from the dead. Oh, hallelujah. Our key verse is that 14th verse. This is now the third time that Jesus showed himself the third time that Jesus showed himself alive to the disciples since being raised from the dead. The risen Lord 
is alive and he appeared. Oh, hallelujah. I keep I keep thought for the day, I keep keep thought a concept, if you will, is that many witnesses, many witnesses saw Jesus after his resurrection. Oh, yes. Why is this so important? Jesus appeared to his disciples after his resurrection. Peter and the other, dis other disciples were witness to this resurrection. And Jesus appeared to, to many so that the people who believed in his resurrection could go and tell others. Oh, hallelujah. So as we look at this lesson today, our, our aims for today is to, the learning facts first is to reaccount Jesus' appearance on the Sea of Galilee after his resurrection. Next, we want to emphasize uh, uh, the biblical principles that, that reveal Jesus' constant provisions for his followers. And then our daily application is to commit to trust in Jesus' provision under all circumstances. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. And so we're gonna break this thing down uh, in the three parts. Uh, the first part is unhappy results, then unforeseen provisions, and finally, unexpected meal. Let me give you them three points again. Unhappy results, unforeseen provisions, and unexpected meal. Oh, hallelujah! These, this, this scene of this, of this, uh, 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 chapter twenty-one. The scene is on the Sea of Tiberias, which is the uh, Sea of Galilee. After Jesus' resurrection, Jesus appeared uh, uh, numerous times to his disciples and his followers. And, 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 and he told them, uh, as he told the ladies that, that met him at, at the grave site, he told them, go tell my disciples to meet me in Galilee, just like I told them to because it's been three days and I raised from the dead. And so they went to Galilee and he came and he visited them uh, 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 in a room with 10 of them there and Thomas wasn't there. And then later he came back and he visited again with Thomas there. And, 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 and so everyone has seen him, but now, 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 after the, the, the disciples saw Jesus, they didn't know what to do. They, 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 they really didn't know what to do. He, he hadn't talked to them. We don't know how long this had been, whether it was a week or two or, or three, but, but, but see, they didn't know what they were supposed to do. And so that's where we pick up our text in chapter 21. After, after these Jesus appeared again to the disciples, this time at the Sea of Tiberias. This is how he did it. Simon Peter, Thomas, nicknamed the twin, Nathaniel from Canaan and Galilee, the brothers of Zebedee, and the two other disciples were together. And Simon announced, Simon Peter said, I'm going fishing. I'm going fishing, y'all. I, I, I just, I, I, I'm going fishing. I, I don't know what else to do right now. I, I'm a fisherman, but I'm, I, and, and I ain't heard from the Lord. I've been waiting for my direction. It, it seems like I'm stuck right where I am. I don't know what to do. I, I'm going fishing. Oh, this tells us something. When, when we don't know what to do, do what you know. Now, I've heard some preachers get mad at Peter and say, well, Peter, Peter shouldn't be taking everybody fishing, going back to his old job. But no, 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 no. This is what Peter knew how to do. And so he went and did what he knew how to do. 
and he was going to make it do, <laughs> oh, hallelujah, what it do. And so after the women had told him that Jesus had been raised from the tomb after they didn't see Jesus for themselves, they were waiting on direction. And so in the meanwhile, in between time, in the middle, oh, y'all didn't catch that, did you? In the middle, where you didn't saw something that changed your life. You didn't experience an epiphany moment in your life, but you haven't received the direction to go forward. And so it seems like you right there in the middle. And when you're in that middle of the epiphany and the assignment, you need to just do what you know how to do. You know how to pray, just continue to pray. You, you, you know how to treat others right? Just continue to treat others right. You, 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 you got a job that you do? Just do it because that's what you know how to do. Because I'm here to tell you, God will show up. And he'll show out when you're doing what you know how to do. So many people get anxious and hysterical because they haven't heard the Lord give them the next step, the next direction. But but but, but what God, I believe, is, is trying to teach us is just do what you do and let me as God do what I do. And when I'm ready for you to do something else, I'll show up and I'll tell you. Oh, yeah, yeah. So, so, so. He went fishing. I'm going fishing because that's what I know how to do. I'm a fisherman. And the rest of them replied, yeah, 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 yeah. We going with you. So, so they, they went out and got into a boat. But that night, they caught nothing. Now, 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 I, I, I. Oh, that just blows me away. It, it, it is it is when you, even in that situation where, where you're doing what you know how to do, but it does not seem productive. It does not seem that there are any fruits coming from your labor. It, it's almost as if you, you're a hamster on a tread or, I mean, on, on one of them hamster wheels and you just just going around and around and around. It's almost like you in some water and you just tread water. You ain't going forward. You ain't going backwards. You ain't going side to side. You just there. There are times when as Christians, especially those of us who are called into the ministry, those of us who walk according to the word and the will of God, that we come to a point in that middle well, well, we can't go forward. We can't go back. We can't go side to side. We just stuck right there. And some people moan that, groan that. They get anxious. But I'm here to tell you, don't get anxious. Don't be afraid. Don't, don't, don't let your mind make you think that you ain't doing what you're supposed to do. Just wait on the Lord. I, I heard I heard the uh, the the prophet Isaiah said, "They that wait on the Lord shall renew their strength, and they will mount up with wings like eagles. They will run and not be weary. They will walk and they will not faint." Wait on the Lord. Do what you know how to do, and I promise you, the Lord will show up. That's why in the Great Commission, it says, go ye therefore. And, and what it's saying is, as you go, as you do what you normally do, God is going to give you divine appointments. God is going to give you divine assignments. God will show up, and that which you do will become divine. So, after. They did what they knew how to do. And they ended up with unhappy results. And nothing more frustrating than to do what you've been known how to do and you don't 
get any harvest from it. Oh, that's frustrating. I've been fishing all these years and I'm going fishing and I get out here and it produces no harvest. Mm. Some have said, well, he was out of the will of God. Wait a minute. Hold your horses. He was just doing, all the disciples were just doing what they know how to do. They were waiting. Now, we get to verse four. The unforeseen provisions. Ah, listen to it. Early, early. I love that word early. <laughs> early in the morning, Jesus stood on the shore, but the disciples did not realize that it was Jesus. And Jesus spoke to them. Good morning. Did you catch anything for breakfast? <laughs> I love Jesus. He, he told said, y'all catch anything last night? <laughs> y'all got breakfast? And they answered and said, no, man. No, we ain't caught nothing. No, we, we ain't got nothing. Then Jesus said, throw the net off the right side of the boat and see what happens. <coughs> he told them, throw your net on the right side of the boat and see what happens. Oh, God is talking to somebody. You've been doing what you know how to do. You're a fisherman. You didn't catch nothing all night long. You're tired. You're frustrated. You're struggling. And then here's some strange coming out and telling you Throw your net on the right side of the boat and see what happens. See, God tells us, he tells us, don't, you need to entertain strangers because they just might be angels. You, 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 you got to be careful how you treat people, even when you're tired and you're frustrated. And, 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 and you got to treat them right. And then listen, because they just might be messengers from God. And in this case, it was Jesus the Christ himself. And, 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 and the scriptures say, they did what he said. Mm. How many of us, when we hear a word, a word of direction, a word that, 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 that it hadn't been confirmed with you. God hadn't told you that this was the word that was going to come, but, 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 but the word came. And you're tired, you're frustrated. You ain't caught nothing all night. But these men, they did what he said. We ought to do what God tells us to do. No matter who the messenger is. And the text says, all of a sudden, there were so many fish in, in that net, they weren't strong enough to pull them in. They, they got a great big hole of fish caught up in their net, a very large number of fish. Mercy God. And then 
verse 7 through 9 says, Then the disciple Jesus loved said to Peter, It's the master. Let me stop right there. It's the master. Ah, it's the master. Who said it? The disciple Jesus loved. That, that, that's John. John is the one that the disciple that Jesus loved. Because see, in the book of John, John never says John in the first person. He always referred to himself as the disciple that Jesus loves. But, but it also refers to him as being the one who loved Jesus. And John had such a special relationship with, with, with Jesus that, that on the day, he says, on one day, it was the Lord's day, and I was caught up. That's how revelation starts, in the spirit. Yeah, and God gave him special revelation. We're going to talk about John and Peter a little bit more next week. Don't, you don't want to miss that. We're going to come back next week and talk about them. But right now, that disciple that Jesus loved told Peter, it's the master. My sheep hear my voice. Yes, that's what the Lord said. When, 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 when John heard his voice, when John obeyed his will, when all of them obeyed, that's when they realized it was the master. They, they could go back and think back, back when Jesus did this before. Why don't y'all cash y'all nets on the other side? They, all of that came to their remembrance. And it says when Peter realized that it was the master, he threw on some clothes for he was stripped for work. And he dove into the sea. The disciples came in by boat, and they went weren't far from land, about a hundred yards or so. And so, pulling along that net full of fish, and when they got out of the boat, they saw a fire with fish and bread cooking. Peter said, "Uh, -uh that's the master. He put on some clothes." And he jumped into the water. I always thought that was the strangest thing in the world. Why you put on some clothes to go get wet? Look like you should have took some clothes off. <laughs> and jumped into the water. But he dove into the sea and he swam to Jesus. While the other disciples, who weren't that far from shore, got the boat in. You know, it's something, I, 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 I always laugh about Peter. I say something wrong with him. Because he always getting out the boat. <laughs> he a peculiar person. He, he had a perfectly good boat and he always getting out. When the storm was coming, he said, Lord, if that's you, bid me to come out. And he got out and he walked on water. Here's another situation. They in a perfectly good boat. Just a hundred yards away, and Peter jumps out the boat again. I, do I have some folks that like to jump out the boat? Oh, hallelujah. Some strange, peculiar people who will get out of a perfectly safe boat. <laughs> Peter couldn't help himself. He wanted to see the mast. He wanted to be right there with them, quick and in a hurry. Peter got out the boat swam to Jesus, and the other men, the other disciples, pulled a boat on in. Mm -mm -mm. The boat was full of fish. I'm going to say that again. The boat was full of fish. This is unforeseen provision. When we do what Jesus says to do, he will give us 
unforeseen provisions. Let me break it down. Let me break it down. See, 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 some, some folks don't understand that, that when Jesus tells us that we ought to forgive others, that we might be forgiven. We don't understand that because when we forgive others without them apologizing and saying they're sorry and all of that, when we don't forgive, we have a heavy load of bitterness, anger, and unforgiveness in our heart. But when we forgive them, oh, hallelujah, we become forgiven by the Lord unforeseen provisions oh oh okay 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 let me, let me let me go a little deeper let me go a little deeper well he tells us to bring all the tithes and the offerings into his storehouse he tells us he tells us that he loves a cheerful giver and some of us have the audacity to say well i ain't gonna tie i, I ain't giving my money to that preacher all they want is money, blah, 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 blah. But God made a promise. He made a promise that, that if you do that, if you give, and you give with a cheerful heart, that, that he'll give it back to you, pressed down, shaking together, and running over. He'll open up the windows of heaven and pour you out just one blessing, and you won't have room enough to store it unforeseen provisions. One of the greatest promises that God has made, it says that we ought to honor our mother and our father. For with that, we receive long life. You ought to honor your mother and your father. They are covering you. And you don't even know it's unforeseen provisions that come when you are covered. Oh, hallelujah. I could go on and on, but, but I just want you to understand these things that are happening when we do what Jesus says do. Mm -mm -mm. Unforeseen provisions. So now we've looked at we've looked at un unhappy results and we've looked at unforeseen provisions. We 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 talked about doing what you know when and, and we talked about doing what Jesus says, but now we're getting to this last part where we're dealing with an unexpected meal. Oh, hallelujah. Listen to the text. Listen to this text. It says, it says, when they got out of the boat, they saw a fire with fish and bread cooking. Jesus then cooked them a meal. Oh, hallelujah. Jesus then cooked them a meal. Oh, man. Can you hear the psalmist says? He prepares a table before us in the presence of our enemies. Oh, yeah. Unforeseen. I mean, unexpected meal. And it says, Jesus said, bring some of the fish you have caught. Simon joined them and pulled the net to shore. 153 big fish. And even with all those fish, the net didn't rip. Jesus says, breakfast is ready. Not one of the disciples dared and asked, who are you? They knew it was the master. Let me stop right there. Now, there was 153 big fish. And there are a lot of the theology, a lot of theologians have went on and they got various reasons to say why this is 153. They want to get down into the mathematics of it and, and each of the number, the number one is God, the number five is grace, and the number three is the triune. I mean, they got all that stuff. But I'm simple-minded. I'm simple-minded. When they looked at all them fish, somebody said, let's go count them because this is amazing. And they recorded it, that it was 153 big fish. 
I'm trying to say something to you. We who are fishermen of men ought to keep an account of all the big fish that we catch. Ah, there should be some accounting to know how many people have been healed, how many people have been been uh, 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 set free, how many people you pray for, how many people you with. You ought to keep statistics. That's all that's saying. Keep them details. Keep them details. But let's go on. Jesus said breakfast is bread. The early, they say the, the early worm catches, I mean the early bird catches the worm. Yeah. I think we ought to get up early so we can have breakfast with Jesus. Sit down and get into his word. Oh, hallelujah. Have, have an unexpected meal with Jesus. Glory, hallelujah. Mm, mm, mm. What a word. And he goes on and he says, Jesus then took the bread and he gave it to him. He did the same with the fish and he gave it to him. I call this again the order of breaking bread. He took it. He blessed it. And then he gave it out in a greater way. We go through this same order of breaking bread in our lives. God takes us. He blesses us. He breaks us. Then he gives us out in a greater way. And the scripture ends for this text for the day. This was now the third time Jesus had shown himself alive to the disciples since being raised from the dead. When we do what Jesus say do, we will experience unimaginable results. Jesus told these men, you're going to be fishermen of me. And when you become a fisherman of men, you're going to have provisions all along the way if you do what I tell you to do. And your harvest will truly be plentiful. So I say to you, do what Jesus said do, because it's harvest time. Harvest time is to bring in the sheaves. Bring in all of those that God has called. It's harvest time. So many people think of provisions as monetary and material, but the greatest harvest in the world is to bring in all those that Jesus wants to bring in. The focus is not on materialistic things, but the focus is on bringing souls to Christ. So when I say it's harvest time, I'm not talking about the money in my pocket or the house I live in or the car that I drive. I'm talking about it's harvest time. The souls that are coming to Christ. We baptize 10 men and March, February, we baptized 11. In, 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 in uh, uh, January, we baptized nine. In December, we baptized a dozen. I, that's the statistics I'm keeping because those are the fish that God has sent me out to bring in. And what a great haul it was. Woo! Hallelujah. Let me give you some points to ponder, and then we're going to close this lesson. When you're feeling lost or feeling like you're stuck or in the middle, Jesus, Jesus, our sweet Jesus, can provide purpose and direction, and he'll never leave us or forsake us. 
Number two, when 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 we are indeed fishers of me, there are fish all around us. If we obey Jesus' direction, we will catch many fish. Finally, we will one day dine with Jesus in heavenly places. Mm -mm -mm. The thought to remember for this lesson, Jesus provides and now, provides now and forever. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you and we praise you for all of your blessings. You've been better to us than we've been to ourselves. We acknowledge daily that you are with us, providing for us our every need, even before we even ask, empowering us to fulfill your every task. May you rule in this world and find an anchor, oh hallelujah, in our hearts. We pray this in Jesus' name, amen. The final prayer I want to pray before I close the Facebook and go into the conference call is the prayer of salvation because I'm a fisherman of me. I want to bring in a big haul. Please pray this prayer with me. Dear Father God, I confess with my mouth and believe in my heart that Jesus died for my sins and was buried and that you raised him from the dead. He's alive. I repent of my sins. Please Forgive me of my sins and come into my heart. I invite you, Jesus, become the Lord of my life, to rule and to reign in my heart from this day forth. Please send your Holy Spirit to help me obey you and to do your will for the rest of my life. For it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen, and amen. For those of you who want to join us on the conference call, it's 619-639-4733. Come and join us as we continue to discuss this lesson for about another 15 minutes or so. Be blessed and have a blessed rest of the week. Goodbye, Facebook. Be a blessing.